Now I can say good afternoon, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of data. If you thought I was had a lot in the peach, it's going to be even more data here. Hopefully we won't end up all scrambled in your head. <laughs> we'll do our best. Um, but this is going to be some of the results from last year's uh, efficacy trial that I did on apples. And these were the objectives that I had, a number of objectives. Uh, with respect to conventional fungicides, some of these SDHIs that are the lone active ingredient in the, in the material, such as Approvia and Fontellus, uh, are relatively new, so I was interested in doing some comparisons there. Also, I wanted to look at an early protectant program because we're constantly having problems with resistance development in apple scab, so some of these site-specific materials. So if we just had, if we focused on having more protectants up front, that would certainly alleviate that problem with respect to apple scab. And then uh, every year I always try to look at some organic materials to see, or, or at least ones that are OMRI approved, to sort of uh, find out where their strengths and weaknesses are. So that's what we're going to do here with these two. That being sulfur, if you're not familiar with microthiol. And then also we're going to have some copper programs. So the main goal is to look at, particularly post-bloom, post bloom and post-bloom, firebot management. But since copper does also have uh, control of some fungi, we'll go ahead and take a look at the fungal diseases. We'll go ahead and apply the copper full year just to see what we can do there, as well as here. And then, of course, as soon as you start putting copper on apples, you've got to start asking, well, what kind of fight are we going to have on the fruit, right? Because that's always an issue of russeting in particular. So we'll do a little bit of that. Okay. Now, uh, here's our standard program, which is Vanguard at green tip. And then we're going to come in with our DMI. In this case, we're going to use Indar. And we're going to add Manzate. And we're going to use the full rate. So we're not going to look at extended sprays here. We're going to do the full rate. Um, and we're going to apply that from tight cluster through petalfall, pink bloom petalfall. Then we'll come in Inspire Super at first cover, sort of as a cleanup, because that's, that's the end of the primary scab season. So we'll come in with Inspire Super at that time. And then we're just going to go right through the summer from second through tenth cover with Captan uh, as, as our protected for the summer uh, for control of the summer diseases. All right. And uh, now, you might recognize this as being a little bit on the higher side. Most of our growers would be applying maybe two and a half, three pounds, but I have to have the right amount relative to how much disease I have in the block. And I've got a lot of disease in this block, so if I went over a low amount, I might not see the kind of control I should be getting. So you do have to adjust that according to what you think your disease pressure is. Here's our early protecting program. Same thing up front with Vanguard, but now instead of having the Indar in here, we're going to have just the Manzate at the same six pounds. Uh, from tight cluster through pedophile. So that's our key period uh, for primary scab control. Again, we're going to come in with the Inspire Super for cleanup. And now we're going to rotate the Captan in this particular program. We're going to rotate the Captan, or alternate, I should say, with Luna Sensation. Now, a lot of these newer materials like Luna Sensation, uh, Maravon, Pristine, uh, even Inspire Super actually have two actives in them. Many of them only allow four applications per summer. <coughs> Okay, but they're very broad spectrum, just like the protectants are, so they make really good candidates to alternate with something like Captan. Okay, and, and, and you only need four sprays here because you're going to get all the way to 10th cover with five sprays of Captan and four of that alternating. So that works out really well. And I should mention that uh, all of this is being applied to Cameo. We'll also have uh, some of the coppers applied to Gold and Delicious so you can see a, a russeting effect. But um, uh, the Cameo was the variety and 100 gallons to the acre. Okay. All right, here's our um, Fontellus and Approvia, or SDHI programs. Uh, very similar. You're going to have Manzan and Captan and Green Tip, okay, up front, okay, tight cluster. And then you're going to come in with Fontellus plus Manzate or Approvia plus Manzate, all right, uh, for Pink and Bloom. There's the Inspire Super. It's moved up a little bit now. Instead of first cover, it's going to be a petal fall, all right. And then we're going to go back uh, for first cover. We're going to go back to the Manzate Captain at first cover. And then we're going to have our Captan alternating with Approvia here and our Captan alternating with Fontellus there. So as you can see, if you look at these two programs, they're identical. The only difference is the choice of the SDHI material that we're using, okay, both early season and late. And I do have this note down here that we are exceeding the maximum amount for the year with these, but we're doing that so we can evaluate both summer diseases as well as early, okay. Normally you wouldn't do that. So being that we're doing research, we can, we can, we can do whatever we want. So we don't have to follow the label, okay? 
So, but anyway, I just want to let you know that that's just in case if somebody says, hey, you're putting on too much. Well, that's because we're, we're trying to find out how it works at both times of the year. Okay? All right, now here's our organic programs the sulfur, the microthyl dispersion, the double nickel, which is the bacillus, okay, MLO liquefaceans, uh, biological, uh, green tip through 10 costa for both of these, so it's pretty straightforward, straight through. And then, uh, okay, and then, so now we'll look at uh, scab and we'll start off with foliar disease. And let's see here. And what we'll look at is the cluster leaves, okay, those are the first leaves that come out. Uh, uh, at the base of each cluster, and, and the scab that forms on those leaves has to come from the ascospores. It's the primary inoculum from the leaves on the orchard floor, okay? So when we look at clusters, we can say that we're evaluating early season control of primary scab. And as you can see here, we had 21% of our cluster leaves infected with scab. Uh, Here's our standard program and here's our, our, our standard program and our um, protect, early protecting program. No difference there, so that's kind of good. We didn't necessarily need the, uh, the INDAR. Uh, our, our two best treatments are right here, the, the, the Fontelis and the Approvia treatments, no disease at all. And, and then uh, not too bad for the sulfur and then a little bit higher for double nickel. But the bottom line is these are, all of these are not significantly different from each other. So that's good news. They're all doing a pretty good job. And we had 74% control with our, our protectant only, and then 82% 80, control for sulfur. That's not bad. All right, now let's take a look at the next step is to look at our shoot leaves, right? Because that would be the secondary scab that forms after. So there's our infected cluster leaves are still in black. That's the one I just showed you in the first graft. And that was 24th of May. Then on 21st of June, we looked at the uh, on shoot leaves. So these are all the sprays that we're evaluating from green tip all the way through to second cover because right after that is when we're coming in and doing our assessment of shoot leaf infection. And you can see there on the control we got all the way up to 68% uh, of the leaves infected. So that's, and that kind of makes sense because we had 21% of clusters. So we had a large amount of inoculum here. It's going to feed those shoot leaves as they come out and they're just going to get covered with scab. And you can see here that our standard and our protectant program, no significant difference between those. Our Fontelis Approvia, uh, significantly better than the others, uh, and no difference between each of those. Uh, the sulfur did as good as our standard and the protectant. However, the double nickel failed to provide any control at all. You can see no difference from the non-treated. And so our two best treatments, 82% control for the Fontelis and 86% uh, for the Approvia program. Okay, now let's look at cedar apple rust. We were fortunate that in addition to leaf infection, we had some pretty good infection on the, on the fruit at the bottom. You can almost always see it on the bottom on the calyx end if you're looking for it. Uh, cluster leaves didn't have a whole lot of infection. Only 4.7% of the non-treated leaves infected and, and uh, no real differences between any of the treatments uh, as far as uh, control. Typical of what happens when you have very little pressure. However, when we look at, now we're looking at the uh, shoot leaves. Again, this is the end of June, so we're evaluating all of those sprays. And you can see just about everything except the double nickel uh, was working very well for control of, of cedar apple rust, uh, including the sulfur. Uh, now the double nickel is significantly less than the control, so we are getting some benefit from it uh, for cedar apple rust. And, and I want you to keep that in mind because we'll look at that again later uh, with respect to the coppers. Um, uh, but, we're, but all these programs are doing a good job on cedar apple rust on the, on the leaves. Okay, so now let's look at disease at harvest on the fruit. And then we'll also look at the post-harvest, in particular the rots. Oh, and by the way, this is a nice bitter rot down here. If you cut through the fruit, right through where those lesions are, which I don't know if you can tell, but they're depressed. Uh, um, you'll have this uh, sort of V-shaped pattern in the fruit. If it goes straight, straight to the core, it would be white rot. Uh, bitter rot usually doesn't go to the core. Okay, now here's percent infected fruit at harvest. This will be the 27th of September on the Cameo. You can see our non-treated, we had 89% of the fruit had scab on them and 29% had cedar apple rust. So we had a good amount of, of disease on both of these. And you can see that there was not a significant difference uh, between all of the conventional treatments. We get down here, and, and the sulfur was just as good as the conventionals. Okay. However, the double nickel 
no effect, no control at all. You can see not different from the, from, uh, uh, the non-treated. If we look at cedar apple rust, 29%. Again, they're all doing a really good job. All the conventionals, the sulfurs, again, doing a really good job, as good as, as the conventional materials. However, the double nickel, again, not significantly different from cedar apple rust. So in this case, the double nickel was, uh, was not controlling the cedar apple rust. If you remember on the cluster leaves, we were getting some benefit from it. I'm sorry, not the cluster leaves, the shoot leaves. Okay, and so we had 83% control with our standard, and 97%, our highest level of control, was with the uh, Fontellus program, as far as uh, scab is concerned. And then as far as the sulfur, 78% control of scab, that's pretty darn good on, on the fruit, and 90% for the cedar apple rust. So uh, I think, you know, we have to think differently about our sulfurs today. A lot of these micronose sulfurs, they have better formulations than what we used to have years ago, where they were, where they are heavier, sometimes they didn't even get sprayed out of the tank, you know, there was residue in the bottom of the tank, or they would wash off more easily. I think that's, uh, that's helping this situation out a bit. So revisiting the sulfur was, uh, I think, a good idea. All right, now here's percent infected fruit at harvest for sooty blotch and fly speck. And you can see here for sooty blotch that all the conventional treatments are doing a really good job keeping disease level down, 100% infected. Double nickel, no control at all there. Uh, microthiol, that's about 80% control. That's pretty good. That's not bad. 79% to be exact. And then if we look at fly speck, uh, uh, it doesn't look like the... Um, the um, uh, Fontellus was as good as the Approvia here. See, and there's, there is a significant difference there. So the Approvia seems to have an advance for fly spec. Uh, there's our sulfur, once again, doing a really good job uh, for sulfur. <laughs> and then uh, uh, the double nickel, again, not looking too good. 87% control uh, and 99% for the Approvia, our best treatment there for fly spec. And then the sulfur, 90% control, and 79% uh, for the sooty blotch. So 90% for the fly speck. So. Okay, now post-harvest fruit rot. This is done two weeks later. So we harvest the fruit, do the assessments that I just showed you, and then we store them for two weeks and then come back and do our rot assessment. Okay. So we have bitter rot and white rot. We didn't have much black rot this year, so there won't be an evaluation of that. 53% of the fruit with bitter rot, 48% with white rot. And you can see our conventional programs, which by the way includes a cop, uh, captan all, all, all alone, you know, all, all, the seas, all season long there. Uh, that's pretty darn good, you know, when you consider it's just captan. Okay, uh, but no difference there. Now the microthiol, not as good as most of these, you can see here, but still significantly less than the non-treated. All right, double nickel, once again, not significantly different from the control uh, for either of these. If we look at percent control, 92% for our standard program, which happened to have been the copper, and 88% control um, for the white rot, that was our best there with Fontellus. And then the sulfur, not quite as good at the rots as it was at City Blotch and Flashback, if you remember, and the scab and the, and the, and the sea opera rust. It was doing okay with those. The rots is where it was having trouble. 31% uh, control of white rot, only 57% uh, for the bitter rot. And this has been an issue, you know, with some of our growers trying to grow organically is, you know, this is an organic material, you can use this, but then when we get to the rots is where we're, where we're starting to lose our fruit. And uh, one of the things, there are some coppers that, that possibly could be added to try to boost the control, but that's, that's been a problem uh, for the organic growers. Okay, now let's look uh, at our copper programs. Oh. Okay, so here's our standard, which is firewall or agromycin, which is uh, the antibiotic streptomycin. And we're going to have it at two different uh, rates, an 8 ounce and a 16 ounce rate. This is, by the way, the 15W. You're probably maybe used to the 17W, but this is the 50W. Uh, and we're using an 8 and 16 ounce. And we're, we're going to apply the antibiotic basically from tight cluster through se second cover. So we're looking basically to spray through the uh, bloom period and a little bit after to get some shoot blight. Okay. And then here's our copper treatments. We're going to have Cueva. It just so happens the Quaiva and the Badger are also OMRI approved for organic, but that wasn't the, uh, the goal here. We just happened to pick them. So here's our Quaiva at 64 fluid ounces, and it's 
works out to 1.28 ounce of actual metallic copper per acre. That's the number you have to look at because that's the actual active ingredient. Okay, uh, And we're going to apply from green tip through 10th cover. So we're going to straight through the season. We have Cueva and now we're going to add the double nickel in at the 8 ounce. Okay, same rate of Cueva added at the 8 ounce. There's the same rate of copper straight through. Now there's badge, 4.5 ounce, but the same amount of actual copper. So these three have the same amount of copper. Then we're going to go to a higher rate of badge, up to 6 ounce. And then we're going to have the high rate of badge plus manzate, okay, for green tip through second cover for the early season to see if the Mancozeb product combined with copper gives you enhanced control of bacterial diseases. That's been known for like, uh, for many, many years for control of bacterial diseases, such a spot on tomatoes. Uh, we don't tend to use that much on apples, but that's what we're trying to look at here. And then we have badge uh, just at the higher rate for the rest of the season. All right, so here, if we look at foliar disease first, percent leaves with scab in our cluster, uh, you can see that we had no significant difference for all of the coppers that were at the lower rate, that 1.28 ounce. You can see no significant difference from them, between them and also with the non-treated control. However, when we went to the high rate, we saw a significant reduction in the amount of disease, the amount of uh, on cluster leaves. However, if we go to the shoot leaves, don't see a whole lot of control there. These all still look very high, regardless of what the letters are there. I mean, yeah, that's different from that, but, but they're still pretty high, you know, in terms of the amount of scab on, on shoots. So we're not getting a whole lot of control out of the copper for shoot scab. Uh, <clears throat> all right, now if we look at cedar apple rust, Again, on the clusters, we, pretty low amount of disease, so we're not seeing a whole lot of separation there. If we look at the shoot, we have a higher amount on the shoots, and uh, we're not getting much control here. However, this is really interesting. No significant control with Quava, but as soon as we add the double nickel, we have significant reduction. And if you remember, I, show, I, I told you earlier about how uh, we were getting control of Quava with sea uh, uh, apple rust on shoot leaves when we are just using Quava alone. So uh, this kind of makes sense that we're, we're getting some benefit from the double nickel when we add it to the Cueva, okay, for the cedar apple rust. Now if we look at percent infected fruit, for scab, um, not too good a control. We saw that in the last, for shoot leaves in the last uh, uh, slide. Uh, here for cedar apple rust, we're getting that same effect. We add the double nickel to the Cueva and we get a significant improvement in control. Uh, and then no, even at the higher rates here of the copper, we're not getting a whole lot of benefit at all from the copper. So we're not really getting a lot of control uh, with, the cedar, uh, with the coppers on cedar apple rust. For sooty blotch and fly speck, as you can see, uh, pretty high numbers there, so we're really not getting good control of those with the copper. However, when we go to the higher rate, we are seeing a little bit of a benefit. And then finally, uh, for uh, fungal diseases, for bitter rot and white rot on the post-harvest fruit, uh, you can see here that the low rate of the copper is not doing the job. It's no different than the control. However, the high rate, we are getting a significant reduction. It's not, it's not a tremendous amount, but we are getting some benefit. Uh, and and uh, same thing here on the white rot. And here, again, when we add the double nickel to the Cueva, we are getting a significant reduction in the amount of white rot. So there is something to this idea of putting the, the double nickel and the quaver together, I have to admit. And that is, an, you've probably seen ads by uh, the manufacturer Certus on that. So there is something to back that up for at least white rot. We also see it with the cedar apple rust. But we didn't see it with scab. Okay, now let's talk about fire blight since that was the main target in this case. Here's fire blight incidence, okay, and so this is uh, number of strikes per tree. These cameos are on M7s and they're five years old, so they're only about 12 feet high or so. They're young trees, so having 10 infected uh, strikes on a tree is quite a bit, you know, for that, a tree that size. And you can see uh, with the firewall, uh, no difference. We don't really need to go to the high rate. We're just doing just as good at the lower rate. And if you look at all the treatments, the copper treatments that we have, basically they're not significantly different from the non treated control, but they're also not different uh, from the firewall. So they're intermediate. Okay. So we are getting some benefit. We're getting about uh, uh, a third as much, roughly a third as much disease as we are with the non treated, at least with these here. I'm not sure why this one, the higher rate, is, is so high here, what's going on there. 
Um, this, this is not too different than that. It just has the manzane in addition to it. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's what we got for fire blight. 96% control with that. Certainly don't need to go to the 16 ounce. And 59% with, it was our best treatment with, the, uh, with Badge X2. So, so the thinking here is that if you've got a situation where fire blight's getting out of hand and you've, let's say, put on strep or whatever, and you're going to come in and certainly you want to you do the apogee, okay, what, will you get any benefit from the copper? You know, from the standpoint of an integrated program, right? Because you're trying to maybe save the tree, right? It's not just trying to save the fruit. And it looks like we are getting some benefit. We need to have a little bit more data, perhaps to separate statistically, but we seem to be getting some benefit from having the copper put on during that period. So if you had that combined with Apogee, uh, it could make a, make a big difference. But the other thing to keep in mind is, okay, are we going to be able to sell the crop? Can we sell the apples? All right? And that's why we have to look at phytotoxicity. So we did that. And we looked at, we also sprayed some Golden Delicious with these treatments along with the Cameo. Okay, and we rated the amount of uh, fruit russeting on a one to five scale. Okay, so a rating of one is zero to 20% fruit russets on the surface of that fruit. Okay, and if you look at the Cameo, which is the black, you can see, regardless of the treatment, basically no effect. Okay, between any of those. And I can tell you right now, we should have had a zero rating here because these really didn't have any russet on them at all. They would all pretty much be zero. Okay, they just fell into that category. All right. If we look at the Golden Delicious, we know Golden Delicious is a perfect canary in the mine. You know, it'll show up any kind of rust. Even, even on the, when we don't even spray it, we get a little bit more, not significantly more, but uh, who knows what's doing that little bit there, but it's not significant. Anyway, so you can see here quite a bit more uh, uh, russet on the, on the uh, Golden Delicious as we would expect. So this leads me to something that I'd like to do, but unfortunately I don't have a variety block to do it in, and that is to go out to a whole lot of varieties and apply copper and do it on a regular basis like we would to try to control fire blight and see how much russet we get. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of varieties out there that we can use copper at this time, not only help save the tree, help reduce fire blight, but still be able to sell our fruit. Wouldn't that be nice to know? I think to me that makes a lot of sense because I, I, I know I can, I can also spray Rome Beauty. That's another variety I've worked on and not have any problem with uh, russeting as well. So there probably are enough varieties out there where, where we can do that, but we just don't have the data. So um, our Brita, Joga Frida, used to have a really nice apple variety block where I could go in there and just very quickly do this, but it's not there anymore. So, um, so anyway, that's it. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. We've got about four or five minutes. That's good. Can yeah. Answer, uh, a few questions. In the back. Um, I I was wondering, uh, do you know the original Kafka species that you have in your block? Uh, which species of what? Um, in which uh, Kafka species that are called uh, apples in your uh, I still didn't hear what you said. What kind of species? Kalatachka. Oh, Kalatachka species. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen both Gliosporides and, and, and Accutatum. But I think it's mostly Gliosporides. On Accutatum, we see uh, more on the peach, and also on, I believe, on blueberry. Okay, and also, have you tried uh, any other SDHI fungicides other than Aprovia and Fontaris to control bitter rock? No, just those two at this just point. Those two. Yeah. And do you think that inspire super? If you just spray it and apply it itself, would that be effective against uh, bitter rock? Uh, I don't know. I, no, I said I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it's a second generation DMI, you know, the diphenaconazole in there. And, and uh, whether or not um, I would want to use that in that same fashion, because I don't feel the cyprodinyl component, the, the, the API component is, is, AP component is, is effective. So I feel almost like I'm putting just out one chemistry. It's certainly true on it's certainly true on brown rock, but uh, uh, I wouldn't feel as comfortable using that even if I was alternating with captan. I feel the the better materials, and I've looked at pristine, Maravon, the Luna Sensation. Uh, I think those materials. I'm trying to think. Uh, these all have two actives, are really good candidates for alternating with with the captan okay. for summer disease. You know, to try to get across the board, the sooty blots, the fly spec, the bitter rot, you know, scab, try to get everything. Okay. Yeah.
Will you comment on cutting out strikes on new shoot growth as right. in addition to your spray program? Does that help? Oh, any anytime you can look, there's 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 more more than enough reason to remove strikes. Okay, it's not just uh, fire blight and inoculum from fire blight infecting new shoots, uh, having a new outbreak or continuing the epidemic. Those those dead shoots get colonized by by like the bitter rot pathogen. Okay, and and so and in within one year can start producing inoculum to infect fruit. So in that same growing season. Uh, you could actually be helping some of your fungal disease by not getting rid of the of the of the uh, the strikes. Now, so you're getting even more money for your labor, so to speak, you know, because you're you're you know you're reducing your inoculum for fire blood as well as these all the fungal diseases that tend to colonize. Yeah.